Here's the deal for mixing. So let's say you don't want to, to spend a ton of money for mixing tools and also want to use CPU friendly stuff. I have a list of four Max for Life devices for you, which costs actually under 30 bucks altogether. So if you want better and faster mixing results, here's my list on what I would install to this date. All right, so the first tool that I wanted to show you regarding uh, Max for Life devices is this diff devices, I hope I pronounce it correctly, aspect. And I would consider this a replacement for tonal balance from Isotope. This is an average line of, of a set of tracks, frequency response line. So if we stay inside this line, we can basically say that our mix translates well according to a, a set of, I don't know, you can put in 10, 100 tracks, right? So this is the average of those tracks, right? So if we stay inside this line, we kind of make sure that our track also stays in line with the average on this AKA. The mix sounds good, right? Or balanced at least. Now this uh, plugin here has only four target curves, but uh, as a little sneak peek, I know there's an update coming very soon and i think it has more um, target curves because right now i stick to the edm which is not exactly the same like for this kind of underground stuff that we do right If we compare those two, it's a bit, we have a little bit of a dip here in the lower mids, right? In tonal balance, it says yes, it's kind of correct, but here we get a little bit of a dip, that's cool. So another cool feature is the LUFS meter because uh, our human hearing doesn't hear every frequency the same regarding loudness, right? So this LUFS is a more accurate way to measure audio or the loudness of audio compared to the human hearing, right? I don't want to go too deep into this, but uh, you can Google that. But in a nutshell, uh, we hear, for example, bass, we hear a lot quieter and other like top end we hear a lot louder right and this one costs i guess 17 euros but it's worth investing in if you can't get tonal balance um again sneak peek there is more coming actually with some drag and drop stuff for referencing other tracks and i don't know if there's loudness matching in there but um, this lets me to the next tool, which is actually for free. This is a volume compensator. And you can use this tool in two ways. Um, the first one I wanted to show is with the reference track. So this one is the reference track, right? And it basically matches the project, the master against this uh, track here right so let's turn this on it's maybe getting a little bit louder now can just tell right now that the low end is too decent in my track I also saw it here in the aspect aspect it's a reference track right it has more top end than mine my mix here And 
and also I have more low end, right? Again, going back to this track, how to set it up. Basically, you just bring in compensator. I use version 3.2 and this is actually a free tool. That's amazing, right? So you put it on the reference track. So basically you create a new audio track, insert your reference track. And then this is important. You select not the master, but sense only because otherwise if you put master, the audio track or the reference track um, goes through the whole master bus processing if there's any right if you run some limiter or whatever then the reference track also gets processed but in this way we use it sense only and then on the master you also insert the compensator and then you have two buttons here one is send use it lufs and one is the receiver so we send from the reference track sender to the master receiver right and just make sure the same uh, channel is selected one and one and then what i usually do is using a shortcut assign a shortcut to the bypass button here i use uh, shift n and then i can quickly switch between reference track and my project file right and again this is useful because it's loudness matched right because we be, our brain wants to tell us louder sounds better right if we if we hear a, a reference reference track that is louder than our mix we always think that the reference track sounds better or vice versa right so this is useful to level match but again on a later update there should be a reference section inside this aspect comes with a lot of new features and tools which maybe also makes this compensator obsolete but there is one more use case for using the compensator because you can also let's say we have a, a limiter running here can't show it because I tested it beforehand but the CPU is running really hot but um, let's assume use a limiter here and then what happens we, we are gain right now because we added some gain i would think yeah man this is the shit it really sounds better but we are fooled by the loudness. Now you can imagine bringing up compensator. One before and one after. Now what we need to do now is select another channel, right? Because we already used the first one for our reference track. So we use sec the second one, use LUFS. So this sender, this receiver, channel two, channel two, right? And now what we can do is actually what this limiter is doing to our track, right? To our sound. Because it's level matched, we are not fooled anymore by the loudness change. There's a small delay every time uh, I play the track. I think it's because of the processing in the background. I don't know. I read, the, I read this somewhere. Just make a, an, a drastic example, so now you can hear it's over done, right? It's jumping and it doesn't really sound pleasing anymore, it's crushed.
So yeah, this is a, uh, another example how to use this volume compensator. Now, this was the second tool, right? Yes. Now the third one is also from diff devices. It's basically one channel, but it, it serves like a, a remote control, right? So I can actually switch between different channels and I can imagine uh, let's say I have, would have labeled all my channels correctly, and but now it's it's a huge mess, right? But let's say I have the kick, and then I say, oh, I see maybe maybe I see here in in this um, diff uh, aspect that the kick is too loud, and then I will go to the kick quickly to the kick. Sorry. I have too many channels here, but but you get the idea, right? So I switch to that, and then I quickly adjust the levels, maybe. Then I go to the next. I could also imagine this just getting the the, the levels right during the mixing process really quickly. Um, yeah, I would say it's really an, an a time saver and also a cool thing is you can quickly add some reverb right to a to a claps whatever it is right so you can quickly adjust the balance and then add some some uh, reverb whatever and then you switch to the next one adjust again next one bam again maybe if you want to pan something again and uh, i found this a, a handy tool and again, sneak peek, there is also a new version coming for this one. And I had the chance to actually talk to him, but to Hugo. And I asked him if, if there's a possibility to actually um, to insert a filter, you know. I think the new update has this option. So you have uh, some processing. So you basically can just switch through the channels and let's say EQ the stuff low end out where it's not needed, right? That's what I recommend and do a lot. So I can switch to this. Oh, this, that's a clap. Just as an example, cutting the lows quickly, moving to the next, cutting again. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Then I think, yeah, I, I need some reverb here. Just quickly add it, muting. This one. Oh, I want this one a, bit, a little bit louder, maybe. Just an example, right? Next one. This one a little bit lower. Whatever, you get the idea, right? Um, uh, we still have this shit going on here. Yeah, so this is the, the third one and the fourth one The fourth one is really simple Just a fucking notepad But it's so valuable to me at least because as you can hear uh, <laughs> as you can see um, I use it also during produ production state just banging out notes here if something pops up and then I put it into the notepad and I have it straight inside here in the session, right? And if I open the session the next day or whatever, or the mix, I can see what I have to do, right? And I usually, before I start mixing is, what I do is I listen to the track from start to finish and then just pulling up this notepad. Sometimes I even make it really big make it like this so i don't actually see the arrangement so i'm not quite fooled by watching the the actual arrangement and then i just adding some notes and i still can see the bars he up here so i can say i need I don't, adding arp sfx Double check C section bar 190, whatever, right? And then I just, yeah, banging out notes. And then it's everything saved inside your project. 
so you have it ready to go whenever you open up your session so yeah those are the four max for life devices that helps to mix faster in my opinion and also better because honestly if you just have little money or if you want to spend little money on mixing tools i would recommend honestly just get this diff device because you can watch how loud the, your track is you can see how it does and again i would aim for the edm but then be aware that there's a little bit of a dip um, for our subgenre, right? Underground music, raw minimal, micro house. So you need to be aware of this. But again, there's an update coming soon for referencing. Again, I can't stress this enough. At least for me, that's, this really helps a lot to increase the quality of my tracks or mixes at least because you, you saw it beforehand right um, I was playing the reference track from Moulin and I instantly saw and heard that um, he has more low top end and I have less top end but more low end right so my task will be fixing top end fixing double check kick loudness turning down whatever then I save it next time I open it I have it here ready to go because otherwise I would 100% forget it <laughs> um, yeah this one and yeah no pad and then honestly just mixing with the stock plugins eq8 from ableton glue compressor um yeah what else is there auto pan, auto pan uh some reverbs setting up three different reverbs small medium and large sized reverb and again using this little tool here to get the balance right and then adding some reverb where it's needed to give your track already a little bit space and stuff again I think this is really handy and can speed up the workflow in mixing and so yeah again you don't need to spend a lot of cash because honestly I bought the adapter from plugin alliance and it was on discount at that time, but now I think it's around 200 bucks for a fucking reference tool. <laughs> and you can get this one for free. Um, it needs some work to, to get it set up, but you know, it's for free and that's cool. So yeah, I hope this was helpful and inspiring in some sort. And happy production, happy mixing. See you next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as always, if you want to download my softbot snappy raw minimal Ableton kick drum rack, it's basically just the starting point for the for a softbot snappy kick sound that is inspired by Barak or Petra Inspirescu and so on. If you want to download this for free, just go to the link below. And thanks for watching, thanks for your time. See you next week. Cheers.